Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final round at the 2024 11th annual Maricopa Open. We're at the Hidden Valley Temp Course for this event brought to us by Infinite Dis. We've got Andrew Marweed along with Anthony Barella. Third on the card will be Tristan Tanner. And rounding it out, we have Nick Newton on the return, just as we saw him in round two. This is a full round, all 18 holes coming at you. Just outside of Maricopa for this temporary course. As I said, Andrew Marweed, who sits at 24 under par, is going to lead things off. He's all knotted up with AB, Anthony Barella. Also with a little forehand action on the first hole. Hole one, pretty straightforward, just 300 feet. You do have to stay to the left of a Mando. Tristan will be short and left with that. That's going to be long and left. Not quite enough. Nick's going to get things started with a birdie on one. Just a few feet closer to the pin is where Marweed is. Marweed sitting at 24 under, co-leader with Barella. He shot an 11 under in round two. That tied for the hottest round of all competitors. We also saw him shoot a 13 in round one, but we all know that 13 wasn't really enough to even put him on the lead card for round number two. He was tied for the fourth hottest round. And due to having a higher PDGA number than Nick Newton, he was on chase card. So Barella's in for birdie. An easy tap in par there for Tristan. But he's going to lose one to everyone else on the card. Big thanks to our friends at Infinite Disc, our title sponsor of this A tier. Pretty straightforward for Marweed. Hole two has some OB on the right side, but it's way off to that right side. Good looking shot coming in for Newton. And I know it's been discussed over and over that there's not a lot out here on the course in terms of obstacles. However, these bushes and trees and things of that nature that are all, we'll say, eight feet high or shorter still prove to be very challenging even just to capture the footage. Marweed converts on the birdie. Two for two start for him. Newton would like to do the same. And there is wind, but not nearly as much as we ha had in round number two but not as calm as what we had in round one, number one. So somewhere in between as Tristan has no problem jamming it in for the birdie. So Tristan's on the board with his first birdie of the round. Well, Marweed and Barella both two for two on their starts, pulling out ahead of Tristan by three. Same for Newton.
we head over to hole number three, 285 feet. You have to get up on the plateau here. Anything short of that is going to be considered out of bounds. I think we saw that out of Barella during round number two. That's going to be deep and left for Marweed. The major mistake you can't do is just come up short here. Perfectly suitable for Barella. Tristan, this is our first time seeing him this weekend. Comes in with a 1,008 rating. And that one's going to be pretty close. I believe he has two PDGA wins to his name. Certainly hasn't been playing nearly as long as the rest of the guys here. I want to say only coming into the PDGA scene around 2017 or so. Marweed for birdie. And as that drops out of the sky, that's going to be Andrew's first par of the round. Newton for birdie. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's brutal. Rolling down the platform, the little hill there, or plateau. So that's going to be an OB penalty. And Barella from a knee. Seizes the opportunity. Take a one-stroke lead. So Nick will bring it in up to one meter. You don't have to use the full meter. More often than not, you will. But sometimes, depending on a line, might be more advantageous to not use that one full meter when you're coming back inbounds. So Tristan... Picks up the birdie as well. A little scoring separation there on hole three. We head to four. 337. This is about as straightforward as it gets. Really not too much to this one. With that being said, let's take a look at what the scoring looked like. And hole four came in as the fourth easiest relative to par. Four and 13 actually were tied at 2.48. So nearly a half stroke under par is what they averaged. A little more than a half stroke if we're getting technical. I know that's what you guys are here for, is my technicality. All the incredibly detailed specifics, insight, and analysis. I don't know what you're here for. I'm being honest, but I sure am glad you're here. Barella is low. Opportunity for Marweed. Tie things back up, and he'll do just that. He gets to 27 under to match Barella. Light work of hole four. Good bounce back for Newton. Uh, just so people know, I know I often say bounce back. That's an official stat that has come about in the U-Disc era. And I don't know if everybody really actually knows that. Whenever you have a bogey or worse and then you come back with a birdie, that's considered a bounce back. And they actually keep stats for that on the Pro Tour. So just kind of throwing it out there. I think it's a good general phrase, but it's also an actual statistic. OB is on the right side of hole number five. This is the first par four that they'll play. First of four of them. 
But you have to be way deep and way right. Also, there is a Mando way off to the right side. That's not till much later in the hole. It's really a matter of how much can you bite off on this first shot. Now, bite off, that's not an official stat or term. I don't think, anyway. Not at least for disc golf. Barella, just a standstill pitch shot from here. Although the shot came out of his hand pretty low. Looks like he should be able to make pretty light work of it. Little pitch here for Tristan as well. Hole five played right in the middle in terms of difficulty during this final round. Average 3.67. Only 3% of the field bogeyed. So it's not a club you want to be in, and AB just got bounced out of the club. What is going on? Did you guys forget your IDs? Our leaders both not taking advantage of the birdie looks, and that's going to bring Tristan within one. A little more clean up here on aisle five. Marweed pacing off the steps that he's going to have to go work on. Big shout out to our friends at Zing Mini. If you make any Zing Mini orders, make sure you tell them the disc golf guy sent you. Hole six. This plays on the more difficult side of things. In fact, the second most difficult hole relative to par. Now, it's still averaged under par, which tells you something, but the second most difficult hole on the course. I don't usually make up all those stats and such. Those come right from the PDGA website. Just want to throw that out there. There's a little stats tab, and you can do some basic sorting. Don't ever fact check me, though, please. So Barella short. At best, looking like a par. Now Marweed's got to manufacture something here. Doesn't have much of a look as he's going to be outstretched with a little patent pending stance. I, oh, yes! Marweed! Light toss in as Newton says, nice putt, I guess. Whatever it was, looked good. I'm going to take another look. What a shot by Marweed. With that, he's going to be your outright leader at 28. And online the whole way, Newton buries it. So very similar look for Tristan.
I'm sure Tristan has heard the line before. Something about Triscuits. I don't know. If you're not doing like the cracked black pepper, I don't know what you're doing with your life. So if you're a Triscuit fan, that's what I want to know in the comments. Do you have a go-to flavor? All right, let's get back to the action. Hole seven. Seven, the sixth easiest hole on the course, averaging 2.52. little double mando action or actually just a single mando you have to go out to the left of the cactus kind of like that So quite a battle we have brewing. Marweed at 28, Barella at 27, Tristan at 26, and Newton, every time he hasn't birdied, he's connected with basket. So all over it. Marweed. Money. What the world wouldn't give just to have Marweed's putt slash consistency. Always one of the top one or two top putters from C1X on the entire Disc Golf Pro Tour. Just incredible. Is that two putts from knees so far for Barella? I don't know if Grace is watching. I don't know if he's practicing something or what, but just saying. Dietrich, Creative Designs out of Arizona. Would love to help with any disc golf course design needs. You can find them with a link in the description below. Now we have a double Mando. As we head over to our next par four, 710 feet, average 3.7. Keep in mind, this is late January, and Tristan's with a relatively new bag. All the other competitors. With their same sponsors, Tristan rocking some new gear. Sounds like we've got an Adam Hammis joining the card, hanging out with him. Like he's an object, and an Adam Hammes. Adam has participated in quite a few of the early season events, as we see thanks to our first light distance tracker, 316 to the pin. Yeah, right about there. The standstill stab. And that sounds like a killer out of Arizona, doesn't it? The standstill stabber. <laughs> the standstill stabber. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm not going to associate that with AB. But he's in for birdie. Currently tied for the lead. However, Marweed... Stretched out and trying to stretch his lead back to one. The 
that's going to feel like a disappointing par on a relatively easy par four. We head over to hole number nine. Back to the short side of things. And nine has an island green that you have to come to rest in. If you don't, you go to the drop zone. Nine playing as the third easiest hole on the course. The next one, hole 10, plays the second easiest, and hole 11 plays as the easiest. So if there's such a thing as birdie alley, it's here and now. And Nick's going to get things started. The easy tap in. Not a problem. Chirp. And to complete the star frame. Let's take a look at our scores after nine, as well as thank our sponsors. Marweed out in front by one over Barella. Connor Rock doing some work. Has the hottest nine along with Marweed. Keeping an eye on him. And Tristan sitting there at 28. All of these specific sponsors so gracious in supporting the coverage. Thank you to all of you, including the Patreon subscribers. All the 100,000 plus subscribers. So you know what I'm going to tell you. Like, share, subscribe. But thank you to all of those that really helped make this coverage possible. Definitely a game plan for next year is if we're on this same property, we're going to have to go to two-camera action. Okay, that one comes back a little bit. So AB short after that roll back, but not a problem. He'll convert. Hole 10 played at 2.3 as an average. In fact, when it was all said and done, 76% of the field birdied it. I was the only hole that was birdied. Well, I guess the same is the next one at 76% as well. Well, birdie or better. You might hear the wind pick up. A very attackable par four. At 623 feet. We saw AB put it to about three feet during round number one. Plenty of distance, but off to the right side of the pin. Also right, but much shorter. Just a little nonchalant pull there for Tanner. Oh, that's tracking. Beautiful shot by Tristan. Definitely putting himself within eagle range. We'll see if he can convert, but first, long eagle bid. Nick, five under at this point. It's 
So Marweed will have to be content with a birdie as we're watching the stepper. And not quite enough for Barella. So Barella also will have to settle for a birdie, assuming he makes this. And Tristan steps up. Very little hesitation. The Eagle, too. Looking like this card. I'm going to go five under. Yeah, that'll work. Hole number 12, 342 feet. Tristan doesn't love it. Nick likes it. Pretty straightforward on this one as well. Plays as the eighth easiest hole in the course. Barella's convinced he's short. And we'll see what Nick has left to work with. Tristan for birdie. He, too, has drawn metal on pretty much every birdie luck if he didn't convert. He's 9 under through 12. Marweed will move to 10 under through 12. Out in front at 34 under. Nick falling behind the pace of our leaders. Maybe just thinking about holding on for dear life at this point to one of the top spots. So Tristan converts on the comeback luck. And we talked about this before that obviously there's not a ton out here, but sometimes the footing, just some of the awkward stance that some of these bushes and shrubs and such can provide seem to be part of the challenge. We saw AB only missed a couple of putts in round one, and those, I believe all three of those were straddle putts. So some of that can take you out of your element. Barella's one behind Marweed, and Newton is in for the par. And as we look at hole number 13, 340 feet... One of the few where I feel like you can see the pin and you know exactly to where you're throwing. I can really appreciate the forehand route here. Just trying to take that last tree out of play, ideally. The one that may have come into play for Barella's shot a moment ago. So Tristan's look is pretty open. 
Oh, and he buries it. <laughs> Solid birdie. That'll pull him to 10 under on the round, 32 under overall. No one shocked by Marweed connecting. Out in front at 35. I'm smelling a star frame here. I like it. As we head over to hole 14. Big shout out to the Herb Brothers out of Tucson. Doing tons of great work out there in Arizona. And helping me out from time to time as well. And I greatly appreciate it. If you need graphic design work they are a couple of guys that can help also doing a ton of stuff for the disc golf community in terms of lessons video work things of that nature tournaments Fourteen does have a couple of mandos that you have to navigate around, but really shouldn't come into play. And you're dealing with the elevated basket. Average 2.58 as Barella's low. It's crazy what a few feet can do on a course like this. I know that seems obvious in so many events, but just think if Tristan's five feet left, he has absolutely no putt whatsoever there. Nick goes to eight under on the round. He's at 30. And with Barella parring, that's going to give Marweed a two-stroke swing, or excuse me, a two-stroke lead now, and three ahead of Tristan. PDJ A tier, working on a discount or sign-up code for you guys in case you're not a PDGA member. It also gets you, of course, discounts over on the Disc Golf Network. I'm uh, going to see if we can work on that for you guys, for all of our viewers and watchers one of the least birdied holes on the course is what we're looking at here on 15 400 feet on the dot We'll see what that does for him. Barella, last to tee. Two behind Marweed. Just four to play. Marweed from deep in circle two. And this is what I was talking about on the previous hole. Just the fact that a few feet one way or another can make such a huge difference. And Barella is low. Tristan, wide open putt. Not a problem. He's going to walk away with the par. That's going to keep him three back of our leader and one behind second place Barella. Like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things I beg of you. I always talk about every single round of golf I post to YouTube. 
you're eligible to win a disc by just making a comment. Usually I'm asking specific questions, but I randomly will pull, then I reach out, then we send you a free disc. It works out really well. And I'm looking to beef up specifically even the rewards for my Patreon subscribers. So thank you guys so much. As we head over to 16, the second most difficult hole on the course. Excuse me, the fourth most difficult. Three hundred and thirty feet. If you've got that three fifty distance, or maybe even three thirty or three forty distance, there's quite a few birdies that are gettable on this course. And even the par fours, you're able to get to every single par four at that point if you're throwing two shots at three forty or three fifty. Not many can throw in which the angle that AB does release on some of these shots, though. Not to get that much distance so easily. Newton, left side, a pole, not a problem. He'll pick up the birdie, moves a 32 under. And he's got to be thinking about Tristan specifically, and then maybe holding off anyone that might be charging. All you can do is birdie, though. Barella goes to 35. That's an 11 under effort so far. Tristan at 34. Is that another star frame? We head over to hole number 17, a triple Mando, and what is the second shortest hole on the course at just 255 feet. Late tree doesn't hurt. Newton's going to be just barely short. Oh no, Marweed misses the right side Mando. Pretty big mistake here. Tristan steps up, punches it right up the middle. Short but very makeable distance. So Barella sits two behind Marweed. Opportunity here. And he pulls it. What are we seeing? Marweed going to the drop zone. And puts way too much on it. I'm not sure he even practiced from the drop zone, probably. As that one's going to be deep and still a little meat left on the bone. Barella's approach. Right where you would expect it. Newton. Birdie look. A pretty similar distance here for Tristan. Confident putt by Tanner. So he's going to move to 35. And what that means is that Marweed is going to be giving up at least two strokes. Wow, make that three. Marweed doesn't get up and down from the drop zone. And the three-stroke lead he had on the second to last hole is completely negated and Barella now falls one back. 
What is going on? 17. Just destroying these guys. So Newton with the bogey, Tristan with the birdie, Barella with a bogey, and a double by our leader. Wow, this is far from over. We've got a tie ball game between Tanner and Marweed with Barella one back. It's a par four. You could get there for Eagle. And the best candidate to do that is this guy. Enough to lose his hat. That will be short and left. Outside chance at Eagle. Newton's bogey so punishing. Pushed way back here to 31 under. Marweed's got to at least match Tanner. Hole 18, average 3.64. He could have used more. That's going to be 25 at least, maybe even 35 short of the pin. And we haven't seen anyone really down here this weekend. Uphill blind shot right next to the pin. There's the pin up top. So knowing where Tristan is, Barella's thinking eagle. He needs it. Can we get a playoff? And Barella realizing that will likely be the end of his run here. Marweed, knowing that Tristan's within 15, he needs this putt. Never a doubt. Pressure putt by Marweed moves to 36 under. That's a 12 under effort. Hottest score of the weekend was AB's 15 to start. That was on the calmest day back on Friday. So Marweed is going to have a 12 under effort. Nick will finish with a 10 under on the day. And A.B., not happy because the birdie isn't going to do it for him, and that means we're going to have a playoff between Tristan Tanner and Andrew Marweed for first place here at the Maricopa Open. Wow. We'll take a <laughs> quick breather, and actually what we'll do is we'll look back. This is what happened way back on hole one. I'm going to give you guys a little refresher. We saw the miss. That was by Tristan. And this is where Marweed put himself. And Marweed and the rest of the card, besides Tristan, would all go on to birdie. So that's a little refresher from a few hours ago. They go to hole one. That's where sudden death will start. And through the magic of time travel, we're there. Oh, Tristan's going to like that. That's within 20 feet, maybe 25 at most. We saw Marweed go deep. Can he throw the same shot? Oh, this is going to be left of the pin. That gets hung up a little. Oh, no. 
even with the longer legs, Marweed, not in a good spot. Tristan has less than 25 feet. Marweed needs this. Really an all or nothing scenario, and it comes down to the obstruction. You know, from that distance, Marweed's probably making, well, 93 out of 100 per his putting stats. Now he's way deep, coming back, grab some chain, and there's where you see Tristan. So Tristan, in the sudden death format, is going to be able to just pitch it up underneath, no reason to go after it. And he's going to tap out, and in dramatic playoff fashion, the teammates fist bump, and Tristan Tanner, your 2024 11th Annual Maricopa Open, presented by Infinite Disc Champion. Thank you guys so much for joining. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed the coverage. Thank you to Sam and crew. We'll see you guys next year.